we could probably talk about a lot of things you know you've been doing it for a while i've been running prepper website for a while but uh, we're going to talk a little bit about organization because like i said you're the pro at that but <laughs> before we get into that uh why don't you share with us just a little bit those of you who don't know your your story i share your articles all the time but those who don't know your story about why you got into preparedness and uh, you know all that good stuff because that's always a great story so would you share that with us Okay, in a nutshell, I was about 16 years old, and I went to stay with an aunt who had just given birth to a baby and needed some help, and they had some really bad ice storms, and it was in uh, Arlington Heights, Illinois, and I was raised in Las Vegas, Nevada. I didn't even have a winter coat, so I went back there, and uh, oh, it was about a week later, the stores were shut down excuse me, the streets were shut down. All the trucks were not able to bring food to the stores. We were uh, rationed with food and groceries. We literally walked, oh, six or seven blocks in snow, you know, two feet deep. I'm not sure how deep. But anyway, we had to go and get, all we could get was one milk, one quart of milk a week and one pound of hamburger. She had a brand new baby and she was not breastfeeding the baby. So we had to figure out, powdered milk oh my goodness they were out of formula everything so and, and then another about oh three or four months later we had a tornado and it took the roof off the house next door so i knew then when i got old enough to get married this would never ever happen to my family not having food in a house um i'm from utah a lot of people the texans are, we know this Right, Todd. They serve a lot of food to a lot of big crowds. We're used to serving big meals. Well, my aunt did not have food in the cupboards, maybe a couple of cans of beans. I don't even know if she had stuff to make bread. And I could make bread, but we didn't have anything. Anyway, so that got me on a roll to realize when I got married, I would always have food. And that's what I've done for 50 years next year. <laughs> Congratulations on that one. Thanks. All right. So, you know, you you do great with uh, organization. And I know that when I link to those articles on Prepper website, those are always one, you know, articles that are going to get a lot of attraction. So can you talk to us a little bit? Um, do you have like, wh what? I mean, do you have a big house? Do you have rooms and rooms and rooms of preparedness? I mean, come on, talk to us a little bit about that. Okay, I'm going to be really honest. I moved from a house that was 4,800 square feet to this small 1,900 square foot home here in southern Utah, and it took a lot for me to get organized. My other home was easy. I had big shelves built in, blah, blah, blah. Well, then I moved to this home because we're semi-retired. So I bought these racks from Costco that are you can't get them at Costco. You have to order them online Costco and they're heavy duty, they're silver wired. You can see them on my website. And they basically have, they're four feet wide, seven, 72 inches tall, 18 inches deep. And that's where I store my preps and my food storage. At one time I had rolling carts from a well-known uh, food storage company, but those didn't work for me. I had always had my quarts of jars that I canned on you know, wooden shelves in the basement, you know, but I don't have that now. So I need to have movable shelves. So I slowly started collecting them. Um, I have food. I have water. Well, what do you want me to talk about first? Just preps? Well, right, well let's, let's talk about this. Well, when, when, you know, one of the things that we always hear is that there's not enough room. People don't have enough room. So you were talking about moving from a big house to a smaller house. And so you, you had to make do. You, you probably learned a lot of lessons. What are some big overall uh, key lessons maybe that you learned, uh, some themes that people can take away from? Okay, that, that does remind me of something. We have a three car garage of which the third car garage really could not fit a, a very big car. So we decided, we designated that our prep uh, supplies. My 72 hour kits are out there, my portable toilets, my portable uh, washing machines, uh, my Dutch ovens, everything is in uh, clear plastic bags to protect them. But they're also um, all or 
organized. Like all my cast iron is in, on one rack. Um, my canning supplies, well, I can't put my lids outside because they would get ruined in the heat. So everything that cannot go outside um, is in my house. So outside in the garage, every prep I have is out there. Um, camp shelves, camp chef stoves, sun ovens, Dutch ovens, uh, camp chef two burner uh, stoves that I can can on. Um, my, well, two sun ovens, butane stoves. All my propane is stored in my backyard. I've got water out in the garage, but these racks saved me big time um, because I can say, okay, that's what I've got. Oh, I still need to get that. So I leave a spot open for uh, well, right now, though I'm, I don't think there's anything else I could, I need. But although I'll talk about that in a few minutes about the washing machine, I found a new one, but I have all my portable washing machines out there my portable toilets out there, and they're all in clear bags. I must be able to see what I've got. And I buy the cheap ones uh, that are at Costco that are on a roll, and you can tie them up and still see your um, washing machines and your toilets. The other ones are zippered because they're smaller, and then I can base them. And then I ha also have tubs that I put a card in the front that I've used, I type, and it says, um, bandanas, uh, family cloths, uh, flashlights, they're solar. Um, I can't put batteries out there, it's too hot, they're inside. Um, all my first aid supplies are in the house, and we'll talk about that, but out in my garage, I have my buckets of fuel, we talked about the other day, um, and I think there's about 36, at least 36 containers of fuel. Um, and then I've got a, a 250 gallon tank of water and a 160 gallon tank of water. And then on the outside of my house, I have four 55 gallon uh, barrels of water. So, so you, you, you sound like you're pretty prepped there, definitely. And so I guess what I hear you saying is that you have things set up that in a way where you can see them very easily. So you're not having to dig through a whole lot of, hey, I, I think I have that, but I'm, I'm not sure, you know, you, you have it laid out. Um, I do like your plastic zippered bags. I was gonna actually ask you about that. Where do you get those? Is that just something that you found local or, uh, because I, I could see where those would be very beneficial. They're actually available at Bed Bath & Beyond, but you can also get them at uh, on Amazon. The smaller ones that I put my Dutch oven in, Dutch ovens in. Even though I buy the large black bags, I'm like OCD. Let's just lay it out. <laughs> I have to have everything stay clean and, and, and fresh. So even though the, my Dutch ovens have paper towels between the lid and the, the pan, I put them in their black uh, large bags, then in the plastic, and those are sweater bags. The other ones are quilt bags that hold like my 72 art kits. Now here's another thing with 72 art kits. I don't want to have to drag those out to see what's in it. I have zero food in those. So I have a card, of, uh, I always use cardstock by, by the, the bulk, and the cardstock has everything listed that's in that 72 art kit. Because Mark has his kit, I have my Okay, I think I might have just lost. Yeah, I think I just might have lost Linda. Okay, guys, hold on a second. Let's hopefully it'll come right back. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so anyway, because okay, her, hey Linda, uh, you yeah. I lost you there for a little bit, and okay. uh, it looks like you came back there. So you were talking about the uh, the seventy six or seventy two. I'm sorry, seventy two hour. Uh, 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 bags, uh, 72 hour bags, and the cards that you have on the front of those. I think that's a great idea, right? So you're not having to, you know, try to remember everything that's in there. It's just a quick shot. But I'm sorry, go ahead, G continue on. Okay, what I did is I, I took a eight and a half by 11 cardstock sheet and I listed every single thing that's in that or attached on the outside of my 72 hour bag. And mine are a little oversized, they're not super huge. 
but they've got wheels because I'm older and I don't want to have to drag too much. My food is not in those bags. So Mark has an eight and a half by uh, 11 cardstock sheet with his contents and mine does as well. And it's right at the front of the zippered clear bag from Bed Bath & Beyond. Okay, awesome. All right, so that's good. That's good to know that uh, where we can get those because um, I was looking at some of your pictures and that's, that's really great. So let's, let's move forward into some specifics because I know uh, people want to know some specifics. Can we talk a little bit about your food pantry and what you've done there in order to, to be organized and to maximize the space that you have? Okay, one thing I forgot to mention, out in my garage, I have these white built-in cabinets and one cupboard that's 36 inches wide and 72 inches tall. That one is packed with straws, paper plates, cold cups and hot cups and cereal bowls. Okay, so that's everything outside that can handle the heat. When we come into my house, I have one queen bedroom um, that has um, about 20 buckets of wheat lining the wall. Okay, there's just Mark and I living in the house. So my guests, which are my kids, and then my grandkids, they know when they come, there's gonna be wheat lined up three buckets high against the wall. And there are small bedrooms, but that's okay. Then underneath the bed, the queen bed, I have 56 gallons of water that are in water bricks. So they just slide under. If you looked in the room from the doorway, you can't see the wheat and you can't see the water bricks. No one knows it's in there unless you, your foot hit the bottom of the bed under it, okay? So, and then in the closet in that room, I have uh, blue cans of water. So that's my favorite water, if you really wanna be honest. It's a little pricey, but it lasts 50 years and it goes up to like 145 to 150 degrees. So, and it's really good water. So those are in cases, looks like a soda can, perfect. Okay, then I move into the next bedroom um, we only have three bedrooms. So one is the bunk bedroom. I have two triple bunk beds for my grandkids. So in that room, I have those same shelves that I had out in the garage. They're six, 72 inches tall, four feet wide, 18 inches deep. And I've got enough food on that. I typically only buy freeze dried food because it lasts longer. I do have dehydrated, but very little um, because it's mainly just stuff I'm going to use every day. So I really want the freeze dried. It just sits there. I've got, you know, two years worth of food at least. And then under the bunk beds, I've got more food. And in the closet, I've got more food and first aid supplies. And um, headlamps. Because <laughs> they won't last out in the garage. So I have to be really careful. Every room in my house has goal zero uh, uh, solar units, uh, they're generators. So I can power up someone's uh, sleep apnea unit or a nebulizer. And then I've got a bigger one that we'll use, I can use for my Bosch. Um, it will not work well, you'd have to hook several to do um, a, a mixer, I mean a blender, but come on, we're not gonna have eyes, so <laughs> I, I'm not even worrying about doing that. Okay, then, uh, under our bed, we have more food. And then it's uh, number 10 cans, freeze dried. And they're all, everything is in alphabetical order. Like I said, I, I, I confess I'm OCD. I have to know exactly what I've got. So I put A for apples and then an applesauce, blah, 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 blah. Everything is alphabetized. Okay, then I've got a dresser that I kind of turn on an angle. And behind it, I now have 16 cases of blue can water. So no one even knows it's back there. Okay, then in my closet, I've got cases, number 10 cans of wheat, besides the really good wheat that I use to make my bread every week. Okay, then you can go down the hall. There's another section of cabinets that's loaded with first aid supplies. I'm probably a little over the top, but I also took classes on doing sutures. Um, how to heal, uh, heal a body, sort of. I'm not a doctor and nurse, let's make that clear. Um, but I worked with doctors and nurses to teach me to do the things in an emergency if we don't have access to them. 
So I can do sutures, inside sutures and outside sutures. So I have a whole bunch of equipment, but I cannot do IVs. Okay, then if you come into my kitchen, um, that's where I mainly have, I had to add more shelves because it's a small pantry. I wasn't used to that, I was used to a big pantry. Well, I get quite a bit of food in there. And then I just barely bought these sticks to kind of divvy them out so my cans don't, I have to know exactly how many cans of beans I've got, cream and chicken soup, because Mark and I eat all our meals at home. Very rarely do we eat it. So, and then in that same cupboard, I have five gallon buckets of wheat and sugar, or flour and sugar. Um, I don't store a whole lot of oil because it goes rancid. I do have a lot of coconut oil. Uh, let's see, quartz. Well, it seems like when you were talking about your different um, bedrooms, that you have the more long-term uh, food there, right? So you, yes. and so if you almost you don't think about it or you you forget to go check on it, um, then that's okay. Uh, I know sometimes I've I've heard of people they're putting cans everywhere, right? And the problem with that is it would be very easy to forget that, but you have set it up to where. You've got the, the long-term stuff in the bedrooms and in places like that. And then in your kitchen, that's where you're, you know, that's where you're really using the stuff. So do you, do you move stuff from when you decide to get into maybe a, a five gallon bucket of wheat? Do you move that over into your, to your kitchen or do you just, just leave all that stuff alone and primarily, you know, just replenish uh, your, your pantry or your kitchen? Okay, my wheat is really heavy, and I, I I should bring this up too because I color code everything. It's it has to do with my OCD. I've decided. So my wheat has red gamma lids. I mean, Todd, you're going to know me more than you ever want. <laughs> okay, so my wheat, all the wheat cans or buckets, they're six gallon buckets. So I always save those. Um, I use those and rotate those. So that's the wheat I make my bread with. And it's really heavy, so I have this little rolling thing that I put one bucket on and roll it into the kitchen and scoop it while I grind it. But they have red gamma lids because they're really easy to open and close. And then I just put it back in the bedroom because I want my house to be um, attractive, but I also needed to get rid of maybe stuff Mark and I really didn't need. So we started decluttering so we could store things that we really needed. And I, people, if they came into my house, they would not know I was a prepper. Unless, although, people do call and say, hey, can I come and see what you've done? Because they don't know what to do. They don't know how to store it. And I've got tips for them, if it helps them, you know. Yeah, definitely. That's, that is one of the, again, one of, one of the big things that people deal with on a, on a regular basis. That's why they want to see what you've done and how you stored it. Uh, because I think, you know, we want to have functional homes, you know, um, just like you, people come over to our home all the time. You know, uh, when when we get together for the holidays, people are going to come over and, you know, pretty much everybody knows that, you know, we prep and all that kind of stuff. So I don't really need to hide it from people, but we, we want it to be functional. Right. And so I think you, you have the same idea there. Uh, we don't want to have just buckets, you know, in the living room all over the place and kicking up our feet on a five gallon bucket. You know, we, we, we want to be able to, you know, live, live well and, and not have all that clutter. And so it was really good to, to hear you say that, you know, you did declutter. You know, it's probably not something dealing with organization so much. But was there any lessons that you learned about decluttering? Uh, just, you know, since you since you brought that up, let me just kind of throw that out there. Anything you want to share about that? I think too, you know, everybody's in a different situation. They maybe have had a bigger house and moved to a smaller home, or they had a home and they wanted a smaller home. Um, so you can find places, but you have to feel good about where you're putting the stuff. And like, I, we have people over for dinner all the time. We can uh, feed 16 people comfortably in our small kitchen. It, well, it's kitchen dining room, but it's kind of a combination. But our table seats 10, and then we have a small table and a breakfast bar. But um, we still, we, we don't 
put like buckets in the living room with a cloth over them. But if you just have an apartment, oh, I'd be doing it. I can tell you that because I want, I, I don't want to have to depend on anyone else, but I'd like people to come to my home and know that I'm not going to, that I can just be myself and serve a nice meal and chitty chat and laugh and have a good time. But still, they'll know that I'm a prepared person. Good, good. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about first aid. Um, you did, you already kind of mentioned it. Um, and I know the reason I want to bring it up is because you, know, you had an article that uh, I linked to on Prepper website that was very, very popular with uh, the, the whole uh, tackle box and the first aid kit, you know. Uh, but you talked a little bit about your first aid closet. Um, can you just t tell us a little bit about that? I mean, what you, um, maybe how you decided to organize that. If we, if we opened up your closet, what would we see? Um, you know, how would, <laughs> so is it color code? Is it color coded? Is it, how is it? <laughs> okay, well, the, everything that's green is my laundry detergent. Those are green gamma lids. The toilets are green uh, gamma lids. And uh, the washing machines are green. But my boot, my first aid kits have a red plus on them, like American Red Cross or whatever. So down the hallway, you can open the cupboards, and I bought these uh, containers that have like three drawers, and then I put labels on them, bandages, um, rolls, butterfly strips, uh, suture, uh, needle, scissors, um, stethoscope, you name it. Everything I have, I could go grab instantly. Now, if I'm going to go teach a class, I'm going to take my, either my small, which really that, it's a really good uh, a fishing tackle. It's a great start for a first aid kit. But if you're really going to get into first aid, you've got to have a whole lot more than that, at yeah. least in, where I live, okay? Yeah, so, we, you uh, know, let me just break in here. We, we talked about that on the podcast. Uh, and actually, I remember Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy talk about that. That if you ever were in a in a real survival situation and there was a you needed first aid, uh, you would go through what 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 you have and what you think is a lot, you would go through very very quickly. And so you know there might be somebody who's listening to what you just said, and I want to remind them that first aid supplies will go very very quickly. That's why you need to have you know you have the the little basic first aid kits. And uh, I mean, I'm going to show that picture here in just a minute. You can talk a little bit about that. But like you said, you have that closet and how important that is to have those, you know, stock up on those supplies. Because when you can't go to the store anymore, I mean, you know, you're kind of stuck and you're stuck with uh, ripping up band, you know, ripping up uh, sheets and, and trying yeah. to sanitize them as much as possible. I mean, that's, that's kind of what you're, you'll have to do. Yeah, so I, I've probably gone a little bit overboard. My husband used, to, he works a lot with civic clubs and he put together a fundraiser. Oh, I wouldn't even say it's a fundraiser. He just wanted to get people uh, to store first aid supplies. So we've got, and some of them would last forever because they're just gauze pads. So it's not like, you know, some of the band-aids might go old. Well, I could, st I could still put this one tape I've got. So I've got it's probably six feet wide and six feet tall and about two feet deep of first aid supplies. Can, can, so, let me ask you, when you were buying those, because that can get kind of expensive, were you buying a little at a time or yes. were you buying bulk? Okay. Were you okay. When we first, when Mark first started getting some of the bulk supplies so other people could buy them, we went through a medical uh, a guy that he knew. Um, we haven't been able to do that here. So I'm basically, I do not go to the dollar store. I think people do that. I, I would do gauze pads there, but anything with plastic strips or the band-aids, sometimes, just sometimes, they don't always stick or they're not the best brand, at least for me. Um, if that's all you can do, that's great. But sometimes you can get them on sale cheaper, um, either at Walmart or Target, watch for the coupons or whatever. So, no, we did not do it all at once. No, no, no. That I, would be way too expensive. I, I completely agree with you that the dollar store doesn't have everything that, you know, 
there, there's some good stuff that you can get there, but you want to be careful. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share uh, to the screen, those that are watching, uh, the your tackle box, your first aid tackle box. And uh, so they're, they're seeing it now, and I'm looking at it. Um, it may, it's so cool. So you've got like some essential oils in there. You've got bandages. It looks like you have um, some kind of, you know, maybe alcohol pads, band-aids. You have a lot of, it looks like you have over-the-counter medicine. Can you just talk to us a little bit? Well, first of all, what gave you the idea of using a tackle box? Well, I wanted something. I went to like a craft store and they didn't have anything big enough. So then I went to, I think I went to Cal Ranch or one of those places. And this one had six trays and it opened out like this. You know, I don't know if you can see that. Then I could see what I had, except in the very bottom one. I kind of have to sh shuffle stuff around um, because I have my essential oils book in there and a medical book too. So that kind of takes up a little bit of space. But then that's the one that I can rotate the over-the-counter drugs. But I wanted everything in one place. Like when my kids come, they know, they just go find that, that one. Because that's kind of what you would use for fever, uh, cough, uh, a diarrhea, anti-diarrhea thing. You know, just the basics. But then, you know, my other stuff is, is uh, major cuts or, you know. I don't think that one even has a bee sting thing and I think that's my other kit. But, you know, I have multiple things in different kits. So I might have a bee, kit, a bee sting kit in that one or a snake bite thing. I try and do, I probably go overboard, but that's just how I roll. I want, I want to make sure that I have enough for the neighborhood because I know my neighborhood is not prepared at all. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I love the way that it is, it is um, laid out and you're right, you know, because I never really thought about it. I have a, a bag, I have a really big one. And then I have a smaller one uh, that I take, you know, just when we maybe we go traveling or whatever, I throw that in the vehicle. And when I ever have to dig into it, I'm digging into it. I'm like pulling things out and all that kind of stuff to be able to see it. But but yours, like, you know, it just opens right up and you're able to see everything nice and, and clear. And so I think it's also it frees up. For instance, uh, a lot of people will have a medicine cabinet, right? And so right. It, it frees up having or to need a medicine cabinet because you have everything right there. I think my favorite one that I came up with, and I think it's because I had had um, this, just those army cans, the ammo cans in the car. I found this DeWalt uh, and then I had to put red stickers, uh, like first aid stickers, because I didn't want someone to think I had some fancy DeWalt tools in that container, but that's my first aid kit in my car. Okay. So I don't know if I sent you that one, but anyway, that's, it's almost two feet wide. It's big. And then on the left of that one, I've got my car tools and on the right, it's food and water. So I, I have seen that one. I have seen that one. Um, we need a bunch of them, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So let me get, um, let me do you talked a little bit about, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this one up too. You talked a little bit about your your buckets that, that have like a first uh, or a red cross on there. And so I'm showing that to those that are watching. Uh, and then there's an ammo box with the red cross on there. Can you talk a little bit about what you have in there and how, how it's different than maybe that tackle box? Well, I was trying to design some for different budgets because I figured they could go to, let's say a Walmart and a buck, that white bucket is probably five, well, I don't know, $7. And the lids maybe, because I do gamble it. And because it's red, it's, it's emergency. So the red gamble lid, and you can get those at Walmart, they're fairly cheap. And I, then I just went to a lettering store and had the letters made. I figured if nothing else, people could put their cough syrup, their band-aids, because they maybe just have, um, it could be a student. I wanted them to have some choices. Like the ammo uh, can just doesn't cut it. I thought it would in the beginning, but then I realized it, it's not gonna cut it. It's too small, at least the one I had. So then I thought, okay, let's do these five gallon buckets. And then people could go to um, the dollar store or Walmart or Target or whatever they have 
near that or see a sale, they can just throw it into their bucket. Um, but here again, I would still list it on a card so you know what's in there and then check the dates and rotate, rotate, rotate. So awesome. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into hygiene um, a little bit. So um, how do you organize your hygiene? That's a big deal. Uh, we don't realize how good we have it in America. Uh, we can go turn on the, the, the tap at any time, have water, we can clean up. Um, people in other countries die just because they can't wash their hands. And so that's going to be a big deal. So I know that you've prepped for this. Um, how do you organize hygiene? Okay, I have a couple of things with that. I figure people are going to be coming to my home. So I made a bunch of bags. And I don't I think they're quart bags. Um, but I put a razor in there, um, a small thing of shaving cream, a bar of soap, toothbrush, everything that someone, they came, I didn't want to have to share. Uh, I, I didn't want to have to, well, I couldn't go to the store if, if the stores were closed. So I wanted something, if someone had to come across the street and grab uh, and sleep in one of my bedrooms, um, so, you know, I think it's, it's kind of like what you would take to the homeless. Okay. And that's on the, at the, um, and that's, that's just for, uh, and I had hand sanitizer, toothpaste, toothbrush, a comb, a brush. So there's, I think I have 20 or 25 bags in the closet where the triple bunk beds are. Okay. That's just for guests that might have to come into my home. Or I might have to take those over to a school or church if my, you know, if we, a gas light breaks or whatever. So, okay, then I've got kitty litter for the toilets that I designed, uh, which everyone's designing. Um, but I did them six gallon tall. Um, they're a little bit easier. Um, so, in fact, I gave those as Christmas gifts one year. I gave them the, the six gallon because it's taller, the lid that goes on top and some kitty litter, some hand sanitizer and some toilet paper. And then I put those bags that are 33 gallon bags around them uh, from Costco or any place um, just to tie them up. So then I know, oh, I've got six toilets up there hey. and I do the thing. Oh. So let me ask you this question. So I'm looking at, so I'm sharing out the picture of the, um, of the toilets and, and all the stuff. Does everything that you have there fit inside? Because you, you have the, the kitty litter, you have toilet paper, the bags. Um, do, does it all fit inside that one bucket so it's nice and easy to, to give to somebody? Yep, that's what I did one year. Okay, all right. So that's, that's good. I mean, again, that's another way of organizing um, so you have everything in, in one place. Um, definitely something that uh, people need to, to be able to, to have and to be thinking about it. Because if we get to a situation where we can't use our toilets or, you know, one of the things I always talk about, and I don't think people really uh, process this, is that there are places where sewage is gravity fed or, or you know, that runs on gravity and it'll go to, the, the waste treatment plant that way. But most of them go there on a, a gravity, you know, whatever decline. And then there's pumps that pump them over and then they continue going. And so if the pumps run out of fuel, because they do have backup, but after they run out of fuel, then every time someone flushes, it's going to continue to back up into the sewer line, eventually coming back into your home. And so if you were ever in a real situation where you know, the poop had hit the fan, you're going to have your, your community, your neighborhood is going to have to stop using the restroom in the toilet, like they're the normal way, because it'll wind up coming through all the homes eventually. And then that whole neighborhood wouldn't be able to be used. So something like what you have here with the, the toilet and, and, um, you know, the, the, the five gallon bucket and stuff like that. I think everybody really truly needs to have one of those just in case there ever was a situation like that. So um, man, kudos to you for, for doing that and giving that to someone where they can just kind of put it in a closet and they have it there. So tell us a little bit else about hygiene. So what are you, what are you doing with like toothpaste and soap and shampoo and, and you know, 
uh, toothbrushes. Do you have enough toothbrushes for what, 30, 50 years? What, what do you have? Well, not quite 30 <laughs> years. <laughs> I figure a toothbrush every six months. So whenever they go on sale, and sometimes you can get them as low as two for a dollar, and they're, they're really good ones. So you just watch. You know, you watch your coupons. Um, I'm not a real coupon freak. Um, because I don't really buy processed food, but I do watch for shampoo and conditioner because, and, and yet yeah, Costco has it pretty cheap, six ninety nine for a big tall bottle with a pump. So I usually buy um, six sets at a time because I need it to, but there's only two of us. So, but if I run, even run out of two of those, I'm replacing them. So I never get down. I always have 24 tubes of toothpaste. I'm like, I just want to make sure that I have toothpaste and I don't have mouthwash. I just own oh, bars of soap. Um, I'm big on that. I don't make my own. I wish I could say I did. I've got enough on my plate. I'm not going to make soap. So I just buy tone soap and it's at Walmart. It's cheap and I stock it up big time. So, oh, and, and soap, dishwasher soap. Come on. We have to have stock that up big time. <laughs> and I do make my own laundry detergent. So I make enough for five years at a time. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, let me ask you, um, did you like go through, like when you go through a tube of toothpaste, did you actually start do a start date and an end date of how long it took you and your husband to go through that and then just multiply that? Or are you just shooting for some round number and saying, I'm going to have 24 tubes of toothpaste and, you know, this, this amount of rolls of toilet paper whatsoever, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's funny. When I wrote my book, I was I had to interview people about the toilet paper because all I ever had were girls. So I said, well, we use about one toilet roll a day. And my writer said, what? <laughs> Not my writer, my publisher. No way. So I said, OK, let me interview some people. So then I started calling some of my daughters who have sons and and they used a whole lot less toilet paper so that's how i gauged my toilet paper because i i said no i'm gonna have more than what i need and then i did make some family cloth and the bad thing about bleach in order to wash those to re reuse them it, it it's not really good after about six to nine months 12 months max but i still store it and then i just rotate it rotate it okay yeah. Well, I, I'm in an experiment right now with, uh, you know, with like with deodorant and stuff like that and just, just trying to see how long it'll last so that I can make sure that I have enough. And I just don't use the regular deodorant. I use the, the crystal, right, um, that you just wet and you, and you use that one. And uh, man, I'm very surprised and it saves so much money doing it that way and uh, just kind of doing a little bit of exp of an experiment so that you would know how much you need to store for your family truly because you have a good idea of course you know it will change if you have kids and they're getting older and that kind of stuff but it's a, it's a good frame of reference to be able to do something like that okay so let's talk a little bit I, I want to come back to your your mobile kitchen because that's so cool I want to share that with everyone but I want to talk a little bit about bug out bags and your kits and stuff like that. And you, you talked a little bit about how you have them stored in your garage already and that you don't have food, but is there anything else that you can add to the organization of it uh, that went into creating your bug out bags or your 72 hour kits or, or you know whatever, whatever you have and whatever you're gonna use? I basically wrote down what I would use in three days. I kind of just took a, you know, a piece of paper and said, okay, oh, Oh, I'm going to use that. I'm going to need that. I mean, you kind of, you kind of just know because you brush your teeth every morning, you floss maybe, or you shave, um, you shampoo. So you start, the list is pretty easy to do. So you just start writing it down. So then I made some printables for my readers uh, for their 72 hour kits. I mean, if you look at them, you'd think you'd need a semi, but that doesn't mean a semi to load it. But here's the deal. You don't need to put everything in. You choose what is good for you. Now, my food is inside my house and it's in a bag ready to grab. So, and my emergency binder. And it's in, oh, it's in one of those sweater bags. That's what it's in. 
I got it from Thrive. They're pa- not from Thrive, but I bought the Thrive food. It's in pouches and uh, pantry containers because they last 25 years, most of them. Okay, so we- just eight years, but. When you're thinking about bugging out then, you're not, um, when you say 72 hours, you're not planning on going out to the woods and and living out there for three days or more, or, or is that part of it for you? You know, I really don't even, I'm not really planning on using those, but I wanted one in case there was an evacuation. That's really what mine's for. Um, I'm not going to bug out in the mountains. I don't have a cabin. I don't have um, a tent. Um, everything I need is in my home. But if I had an evacuation, yes, I need a 72 hour kit. If they tell us to go over to the church, uh, one of the churches in our subdivision or a school, then I will go and I'll take my portable kitchen because uh, some of the churches in my neighborhood do not have any supplies in their kitchens. The schools do, but I don't know if we'll be able to get in there. Um, So it depends on where we go. I wanna be able to cook what I wanna cook. So that's why I made that portable kitchen. Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's go ahead and jump into that. So I'm going to share uh, the portable kitchen and uh, you can talk to us a little bit about what we're seeing. Um, I, I have two pictures that I can share. And so I'll switch out between those. Uh, but go ahead and talk to us a little bit about what, what we're seeing, what you have in there. Okay. It's basically everything you would use if you cook from scratch. There's strainers, there's uh, knives. I mean, I didn't buy real expensive ones, but they're gonna be good enough to cut uh, some things over to church or a school, okay? So there's like a, no, I don't think, I I can't remember if I put a rolling pin in there or not, Um, but there's stainless steel bowls, there's uh, service spoons, there's uh, cutting boards, oh my gosh hot pads, measuring cups, measuring spoons, can openers, of course. I mean, everything you would need to cook on, except for the butane stove or, you know, with the canisters of fuel. So I'm picturing if we could go to, are you there? Okay, you are. Okay, I thought it stopped. Okay, if you went to this church, they'll let us heat food so we could cook there if we had power. If we didn't, we'd use a butane stove and the fuel, so I could cook a meal if everyone brought their cans of raviolis or chili, or we could open cans of whatever and make some quick meals. It's it's a nice, I gotta say, it's a nice little setup. And um, even if, even if it wasn't just for, like you said, going to the, uh, you know, cooking in the neighborhood or whatever, definitely that's better than any camp out that, you know, I could take out on a camp out anything that I ever did with the Boy Scouts or camping or whatever. Uh, anyone who would love to have that, that has everything. Yeah, it's great for camping. So it really isn't just for emergencies. Exactly. <laughs> All right. That, that sounds, sounds really good. Um, so I know that you've brought up talking to, you know, or, or maybe going to the, to the church and in doing, you know, working there and stuff like that, if there were ever uh, an emergency, have you ever had those conversations with the people that are there and say, hey, look, if there's ever a situation that, you know, people need to come because of an emergency situation, then we want to come and help out. Have you ever had that conversation with them? Oh, they contact me all the time. In fact, uh, have you heard of point of distribution? Uh, um, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. They contacted me, that's the health department, and they work with different churches, and then they choose a building. And um, I did have to argue with that one because I physically could not walk 15 miles to that point of distribution place. And then I did talk to my prepper doctor. Well, I won't get into that, but he said, do not go there because really they're gonna have, they trained us how to hand out for anthrax. They're gonna give you Cipro. I can't remember the other one for children. Um, but there's going to be riots here. That's going to be a touchy. And here, here's the deal with that. And I don't want to get off on a tangent, but if we lose, um, if we get hit by an EMP, those trucks from Colorado that are going to bring those prescriptions to Southern Utah will not be able to drive. So I don't think they're thinking that one through, but that's a Linda thing. But I did go, Mark and I were trained. 
my husband, Mark. So we could do it and we are assigned to do that. So we'll see what happens. Okay. All right. So, awesome. All right. So I, I, there is, there's a, two questions on the Facebook page. Um, one about the kitchen set. What, what is that? Nor what was that originally used for? I guess you get, it's a Stanley. Is it a Stanley toolbox? Is that what it is? It's a toolbox, a Stanley fat max. I think it's called. Okay. And you just got it like at a home Depot or Lowe's or did you order it online? You know, it's funny. It was cheaper on Amazon, but it, you can get it at home Depot. They, they run around $80. Okay. And one of the other questions was about your inventory. Do you have a running inventory like on a spreadsheet or, I mean, do you keep like an old yes. school, old school, you know, uh, ledger or, or what do you do there? Okay. My kitchen set has a list because it's on my website. So everything, it even tells you what to put on each shelf. So each, con each con uh, compartment, I put this, I put this, put this. Okay, so that's put in my kitchen, uh, portable kitchen. Okay, then my food storage, I do have a running total of what I've got. I have sheets, it's called, what do I have? So they're printables on my website. What do I have? Is it, you know, dairy, uh, meats, vegetables, fruits, uh, wheat, everything. So I log everything. If I take a can, I check off a can. So I'm, I'm very specific what I've got, but I don't want to make it hard. Um, I do have one that says, uh, where do I start? And that one is when I'm talking to people at classes that are new to food storage. And it's basically saying, I want you to write down, it's seven days. I want you to write down what you ate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then there's a spot on the side that says, okay, I'm going to pick up some peanut butter and jelly and crackers or a loaf of bread. So it makes it easy. Uh, and then everybody can choose their cans for the different meals. So it's, it's really easy to kind of say, oh, this is what I ate. Oh, I can make that, I can buy that and stock up on it for seven days worth of food. Great, okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and we'll start winding this down. Somebody who is maybe new into preparedness and they've started acquiring a bunch of stuff, right? And then uh, it's kind of everywhere. What would you recommend to them to where to start or how to start being organized? Somebody who is okay, I would, I would say make a plan. I would say a one-year plan, a two-year plan, three-year plan, four-year plan, five-year plan. Because you can't, unless you're really, really wealthy, you're not gonna be able to buy all your preps in one year, if not even in five years, but you decide what the most important things you want to purchase. For my girls, I gave them butane stoves and canisters because they're all young married uh, women and with their families. So that was number one for them. And then I wanted, I just sent them cases of blue cans of water. So basically you write down what's important to you. You know, you've got to have water above all but I also need to be able to cook something and I want it to be affordable. So a butane stove is affordable. It's 20 bucks usually. And then start writing down, oh, you don't have to buy freeze dried food. That's out of my budget. Okay, that's okay. Buy a case of green beans if that's what you eat for dinner. Um, buy a case of mac and cheese. Um, you don't have to make this expensive. Preps, you know, it's, it's kind of like two different lists. Well, I guess you could look at it even more because there's a first aid list. Every time you go to the store, get an extra over-the-counter cough syrup if you use that all the time. You don't want to just get it and then have it expire. So write a list of things that you have a goal that you want to purchase and make it easy on yourself. We don't go out there and just have a pallet delivered to our yard. We don't. That's too expensive. Do, would you suggest maybe um, starting with some totes? You, you know, if they're organizing, trying to organize, and maybe they yes. don't have a lot of room, um, some cheap totes at, maybe at the dollar store or whatever, and um, they could just kind of just go very general, like first aid, uh, you know, hygiene, yeah. and, you know, that kind of stuff, and they can kind of go from there. And once that gets to a point where it's filled up or they need to move on to the next uh, whatever, I don't know. Um, I just, you know, I, I know from being 
from starting out, you can, there's this big overwhelm and you can yep. start stashing things just everywhere and you want to be purposeful about it and put it all in, in one area so, or at least know where it is. So I know that you create a lot of lists and you put the, you know, you put the, the contents of each thing that is in whatever package you're creating or kit that you're yep. creating. And so I think that's very valuable to be able to just look at that and not have to go through it all. Because I've done that before. I've been there before where you get a tote out and you just start pulling things out, looking for it instead of just being able to look at one little sheet. So um, I think that's good. Um, any other advice on that, you know, when they're starting out to organize their preps? Okay, I'm going to suggest something. I didn't do really big totes because for me it's too hard to find everything. So I started out, I would buy um, like an Ace Hardware or, some, or Walmart or Target. They all have really good containers, and they're usually on sale right after Christmas. And get, a, get one that has really good uh, clamps and then slowly fill them so then you've got 10 let's say you buy 10 because you know you can stack those in your hall closet um, and you can stack a lot in some of those some of mine are the ones I like are about 12 inches tall maybe 15 inches deep and eight inches wide so they're pretty big they're bigger than the, uh, say a shoe, shoe box but they're also it keeps uh, mice or critters out because we, we have a lot of desert rats here. So, you know, I'd say put it in a box. If that's all you can do, put it in a box. But something that's airtight, even if you just buy gamma lids and the buckets at Walmart, they're pretty cheap. And then just start adding, adding, adding. But have them available so then it reminds you to be, be uh, mindful of what you want to fill them with. And then in the front, you put a, a card um, with big letters that says first aid supplies, uh, family cloths, toothbrushes, toothpaste. The sky's the limit. We can all do this. We've all done it. Slowly but surely, we can do it. It, it just takes a little bit of time and to be purposeful about it. And almost it's one of those things where if you, if you do it ahead of time, you put a little bit of effort uh, ahead of time at the front end, it pays off, you know, at the back end. Definitely, if there was a poop at the fan situation and you needed to get to stuff quickly, you know, the way that if it's organized, you can get to it. And that's one reason why that's so important. So, yep, that's so true. All Do right. It before you get a whole bunch. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. That's good. That's good. All right. So I, I want to ask you a question that's not related to. Um, really organization you've brought the, you, you've kind of made some mention of it and uh, it's something that's important to me you've talked about cooking for people for instance at the church you've talked about for instance uh, putting together uh, hygiene kits for people who were to come over and visit when the poop hits the fan is your idea it's, or it seems like your idea of going through that and weathering that is to be a help to people that are out there and to build a community a, a, around around you is is am I hearing you correctly on that or are you more along the the idea of we're going to kind of close ourselves into our home and just kind of wait everything out? You know it's hard. I mean, I do have some weapons if if. if if things got really bad, uh, I don't really talk about that on my book or on my website. Um, I hope I never have to use them. I know how to use them. But I also, um, my husband and I are uh, Christians and uh, we're very civic minded. Uh, we are naturally helpers. We, we do stuff for other people and most everyone does. So could I just say no? Um, but my only, uh, uh, my one concern is is that I can't feed the whole neighborhood. So I will do what I can. I know that I will be a chef without the credentials because I can cook for, for a crowd. So um, I know I could make bread for the entire neighborhood and because I have the supplies. So yes, I, I picture myself and there's two other ladies. We will be the cooks and Mark would be too. So... That, that's good. I mean, people would be busy doing a whole bunch of other stuff. And so uh, if they had people cooking where they could come, 
and get a good meal, that would be so, so important. Okay, so uh, thanks for that. So as we, as we wind down, you've mentioned your book. So talk to us a little bit about your book before we, we end off here. Well, what's it about and where can people find more information about that? Okay, I don't know if you can see it from here. Let me see. I'm not sure. Yep. Back. Prepare your family for survival. Um, it's, you know, I, I was actually asked to write the book. I had no intentions of writing a book. I never felt I was a writer. And they said, uh, we don't want a writer. We want an expert. I said, okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> so I had some help with it because I am not a writer. Um, but I do know his stuff, and I was uh, privileged and honored to be asked to write this book. Um, so uh, it's, it basically has everything. It's a family-friendly book. I do not talk about weapons. That was the agreement I had when I was asked to write the book. I wanted a family to be able to sit down and teach their children how to be prepared. So um, it's available on, online everywhere worldwide, uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, every bookstore. It's available in every bookstore. And I'm totally honored that they asked me to write it, to be honest with you. So it'll cover the topics from just basically be getting prepared all the way to being really prepared or and everything yes. in between, yeah. everything you need to know, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So if people wanted to find out a little bit more about you and what you're doing uh, in the preparedness space, uh, how can they get in touch with you? Where should they go? Um, go to foodstoragemoms.com. Um, I get about three to 400 emails a day and I answer every single one of them. I don't hire someone to do that. Um, so if you contact me through my, either through a comment on a post or an email, you can be guaranteed I will answer it within 24 hours. So I, my life, I feel God has asked me to teach the world to be prepared. So uh, that's my job and I'm blessed to be asked. Awesome. I, I feel the same way. So that's great. Uh, good, to, good to hear you say that. Well, Linda, I greatly appreciate you giving up of your time on this Thursday uh, as we're going into the holidays. I know things can get really, really crazy. So thanks so much for taking your time and sharing your knowledge of organization and some of these the great picks uh, that you shared and just uh, helping us to maybe wrap our, our minds around that a little bit uh, more. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we, we end it? I just say just get one can at a time. That's really all you have to do. One can at a time or one case of water at a time or one water brick. Just do it. You can do it. I promise. Awesome. That's great advice. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we really do appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for asking me, Todd. Thanks, you guys.